Hello! In this video, we will continue our discussion of using the definite integral to specifically calculate the area between curves. Now, when we're going to proceed with these problems, such as finding the area of a region bounded by curves, we're first, first going to take the region, we're going to partition it or slice the region into smaller pieces. And when on each piece, on each slice, we're going to use the areas of rectangles to find the areas of those small pieces. Then we'll add the areas of those rectangles using Riemann sums and then take the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity to pass the definite integral, thereby obtaining the area of the larger and whole region. Let's look at an example. Consider the region bounded by the curves f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 15x and g of x equals negative 3x squared plus 3x. Now in this particular graph, f of x is this curve, this cubic, and g of x is this parabola. And we see in this graph that there are two regions that are bounded by the curve. There's this region, which we're going to call region 1, and then this region here, which we'll call region 2. The left region is bounded above by f of x and bounded below by g of x, and region 2, the region at the right, is bounded above by g of x and below by f of x. And this is going to influence how we can use the definite integral to find the areas of these regions. Now before we can proceed, we really need to find the points of intersection. We find the points of intersection by finding when f of x is equal to g of x, and algebraically we find that that occurs when x is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 3, and x is equal to positive 3 thereby giving us the point 0, 0, negative 3, negative 36, and 3, negative 18. So for the left region, so when x is between negative 3 and 0, I'm going to consider partitioning the region into n rectangles, and then I'm going to look at the height and width of the kth rectangle. So suppose I consider a partition where I start with x sub 0 at negative 3, x sub n, is when x is equal to 0, and then I partition that, that interval from negative 3 to 0 with n plus 1 partition points, from, so from x sub 0 to x sub n. And suppose I consider this is x sub k minus 1, and this is x sub k. I'm going to look at a rectangle whose width is delta x sub k, or x sub k minus x sub k minus 1, and whose height is determined by the difference of the functions at some sample point, which I'll say c sub k is the kth sample point. So the height of my rectangle will be determined by the function f at that sample point, so it's going to be f at c sub k, so and then it's going to be down to g evaluated at that sample point, c sub k. So here's my height, suppose this is c sub k, so the height of my function goes from the top function f down to the um, bottom curve, g of x, the width is delta x sub k, so therefore the area of the kth rectangle is height times width, or it's that top function minus the bottom function evaluated at the sample point times the width, delta x sub k, so it's f evaluated at c sub k minus g evaluated at c sub k times delta x sub k, and I put that sample point c sub k into f, to get 2 times c sub k cubed minus 3 times c sub k squared minus 15 c sub k. And I subtract off g evaluated the sample point c sub k. And then multiply times my width. Now knowing that that's just the area of a slice or area of a rectangle from the partition, 
I want the area of that region, which is approximated when I add up the areas of the rectangles or those slices. So, and, and each rectangle has an area that's determined the same way, where the top minus the bottom function evaluated as sample point gives me the height, delta x sub k is the length of a subinterval given by the partition, so that's the width. So that's f evaluated at c sub k minus g evaluated at c sub k times delta x sub k. I'm summing from k going from 1 to n. Plug those sample points c sub k into f and into g, and I find the difference of those function values at c sub k. Again, I can think of this as my height because that's the top function minus the bottom function times the delta x sub k is the width. Now knowing that as I take the limit as the norm of the partition, or in other words, as the width of my uh, longest subinterval goes to zero, I get an infinite number of rectangles and I get the definite integral. Where again, I can think of this as the height of a rectangle this becomes the width, and when I have infinitely many rectangles, I look at the integral from negative 3 to 0 of 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 15x minus the quantity negative 3x squared plus 3x dx. Simplifying, I get the integral from negative 3 to 0 of 2x cubed minus 18x dx, which gives me a value of 81 halves. So the area of this left region right here has an area of 81 halves square units. Just reflecting on that process, first we partitioned the region and we found the area of the kth slice by looking at the height times the width. We summed the pieces or the areas of the rectangles using Riemann sums. And then we took the limit of that sum as the norm of the partition went to zero to get the definite integral. If we look at the right region, that second region, using that same process, we're going to partition that right region into n rectangles. So again, in this case, this is going to be x sub 0 is going to be at 0. x sub n is going to be at x equals 3. I can consider a slice and look at the area of a rectangle up in, in there. So again I could say that this is x sub k minus 1, this is x sub k. The area of the kth rectangle is going to be the height which is determined by the top function. In this case the top function is g evaluated at a sample point. minus the bottom function, which in this case is the function f, evaluated the sample point, and our width is delta x sub k. So I've got negative 3 c sub k squared plus 3, sub c, 3 times c sub k minus the quantity 2 times c sub k cubed minus 3 times c sub k squared minus 15 c sub k. This is the height of that kth rectangle times delta x sub k is the width of the rectangle so I've partitioned the region. I found the area of one rectangle, namely the kth rectangle. To get the area, to approximate the area, I'm going to sum the areas of the n rectangles. So I'm going to sum k going from 1 to n of the height times the width. And each rectangle is it has an area that's figured out the same way. It's the function g minus the function f evaluated at a sample point times the width, delta x sub k. And when I take the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity and the norm of the partition goes to 0, I get the definite integral from 0 to 3 of negative 3x squared plus 3x minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 15x dx. So your book gives you a formula, 
but it's important just to, to not just memorize the formula. It's, it's important to know where the formula came from. So this we, we know that the difference in the function gives us thinking of the height of those rectangles, which is where we got the top minus the bottom, to think of the height times the width, whereas the norm of the partition goes to zero, the width, delta x sub k, also goes to zero, which is what we call an infinitesimal. And so we call that our dx, or our differential. So again, we got the definite integral from zero to three. Simplifying, we get 18x minus 2x cubed dx. Once we integrate, we get 9x squared minus x, fourth, x to the fourth divided by two. And when we evaluate at the limits of our integration, we get 81 halves again. So the area of the region that's bounded by those two curves gives us a total of 81 square units. And again, reflecting the process, we first partitioned and found the area of the kth slice. We summed the pieces, or the areas of the rectangles, and then we took the limit. And this is the process we want you to follow because when we get to calculus two, we're gonna be looking at the same process but applying it to different things. Um, whether it's finding the center of mass or uh, finding the volume of an object, finding the surface area, we're gonna take the entire region we're going to slice it or partition it into n slices and find the area or volume or uh, center of mass of, of one piece. And then we're going to sum that and then take a limit to get the def definite integral. So it's very important to follow this process because this process helps you to set up the definite integral properly. Let's look at another example. And in this particular example, we're going to see that we can, we can set up the areas of those rectangles differently. Okay. We can use both vertical rectangles or we could use horizontal rectangles. So let's lay in the area of the region bounded by the curves y squared plus x equals four, which is this parabola, and the line y plus x equals negative two. Okay. First of all, we wanna find the points of intersection so that it occurs when, those, uh, when y squared plus negative one, y minus two equals four. Solving for that, we get the points of intersection occur at negative 5, 3, and at 0, negative 2. So first, let's consider what if we use vertical rectangles. Well, it's interesting because if we use vertical rectangles, depending where we place the vertical rectangles, we're going to see that that top function minus the bottom function changes. So if I have a vertical rectangle here, I see that the top function the top function is given by um, well taking uh, is y equals the square root of four minus x The top function comes from y equals the square root of four minus x, and the bottom function comes from the line. So that's negative x minus two. Okay. So when I consider top minus bottom times the width, I, I see that I've got the square root of four minus x minus negative x minus two. However, if I take A rectangle in this right portion or right of the origin, top minus bottom is determined different ways. Here I've got the parabola, square root of 4 minus x, minus a negative square root of 4 minus x. So the top minus bottom to give me the height then multiplied by the width, in this case is going to be the square root of four minus x minus a negative square root of four minus x times, I change an x, and actually this should be an x sub k.
So we see that reflected in these expressions here. So when x is between negative 5 and 0, the area of the rectangle is going to come from the top minus the bottom times the delta x sub k. So I'm going to have the square root of 4 minus x sub k minus a negative x sub k minus 2 times delta x sub k. So again, that's the height times the width. When x is between 0 and 4, so to the right of the origin, I'm going to have the height of the rectangle determined by the top minus the bottom function, but in this case it's going to be the square root of 4 minus x sub k minus a negative square root of 4 minus x sub k times my width. And so then when I pass to the definite integral, I'm going to get the area of the region is the sum of those two definite integrals. So this is going to be the integral from negative 5 to 0 of the top minus the bottom function dx plus the integral from 0 to 4 of the top minus the bottom dx. So that's going to be the integral from negative 5 to 0 of the square root of 4 minus x minus a negative x minus 2 dx plus the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of 4 minus x minus a negative square root of 4 minus x dx. And simplifying and then evaluating the integral, we get that the area of that region is 125 over 6. And again, that's using vertical rectangles. Now, horizontal rectangle sets things up differently, but it actually, in my opinion, makes things much easier. Suppose we now consider the same region, same curves, same points of intersection, but now let's consider horizontal rectangles. Suppose I look at a partition, and this time I'm partitioning from y equals negative 2 to y equals a positive 3. If I look at a slice of that region and I consider a rectangle, I see that in this case, the height of the rectangle is delta y sub k. And the width of the rectangle comes from taking the right curve, the curve on the right, and subtracting the left curve, the curve on the left. So that comes from the parabola 4 minus y sub k squared minus a negative y sub k minus 2. And notice that this is expressed in terms of y. So these are this is the curve x equals 4 minus y squared and x equals a negative y minus 2. So using horizontal rectangles in this case, I've got my expressions as functions of y, which is clearly noted when I make that partition, I can see that I've sliced up things on the y-axis, and so my height of my rectangle came from a difference of y values. Now, this is true for all the y values between negative 2 and 3. I don't have to split things up based on where the rectangle, where the, where the region is located. Because each rectangle, the right minus the left, for the width of that rectangle, is evaluated the same way. It's the parabola minus the line. So setting up the area of the region, I get the definite integral from negative 2 to 3 of the right minus the left, integrating with respect to y. So I've got 4 minus y squared minus the quantity negative y minus 2 from negative 2 to 3. Simplifying, I get the integral from negative 2 to 3 of 6 plus y minus y squared dy. I, after I integrate, I get 6y plus y squared over 2 minus y cubed over 3, integrating from negative 2 to 3. And again, I get the same area, 125 over 6 square units. So either way, whether I use the vertical rectangles or the horizontal rectangles, I get the same answer. But you might agree that this is a little less work. So the best way to, to figure out the way to go is to do lots of practice, to try both vertical and horizontal rectangles. Make sure you dr draw in the partition, look at a slice, look at the, the height and width of a single rectangle. Use that to develop a Riemann sum, and then use that to develop your de definite integral. I wish you the best of luck as you practice, 
and finish out the course strong.